This is my mother. And today I'm going to tell you a story about how, despite trying everything to the contrary, I became my mother, and also why I think everyone here should consider becoming a nurse, or at least think about nursing in a new light. The story starts, and I'm 18. I went to a Catholic girls' school in Omaha, Nebraska, and I left for my freshman year at Reed College in Portland, Oregon. Atheism, communism, and free love. It's every parent's dream for their child. <laughs> I remember my first week on campus, some kids came up and asked me if I wanted to discuss the Iliad on the front lawn over a mason jar full of bourbon and a joint. For all its anarchy though, Reed is academically conservative. I remember people would casually drop phrases like, Marxism and paradigm shift, and I had never heard of either. My freshman year humanities professor called me into his office one day, and he sat me down and he said, I can tell you're trying, but your language, it's flowery. And I took it as a compliment. So later that year in Intro to Psychology, I learned something that stayed with me. And it's that from a young age, our mind it likes to categorize things, put them into neat little boxes. Like when we see a spoon, our brain tells us this is the same as every spoon you've ever seen, with all the same traits and characteristics, and it goes in the spoon box. This is how we assimilate information and move through the world. The thing is that this mechanism that is evolutionary, that can mean survival, it also leads to stereotyping. I remember the professor saying, this is why we need the liberal arts, to challenge this innate tendency. And he's right, because the liberal arts, they force us to grapple with ideas that are living and breathing, not just those that impact our bottom line. So graduation day came, the parents arrived, and milled about the small campus, embarrassing us between glasses of champagne, and they ask what we thought was the most pedestrian of questions. What's next? And the stock answers were either, oh, we're going to backpack through Europe, or I'm going to take time to think. My plan, though, was a little more type A, and not exactly flowery. I was ready to go and get a PhD. But in that year that I was applying to programs, things started to unravel. I was feeling isolated in the lab where I was working mainly with albino rats and people who came and went out of these studies so fast, I never even knew how the research was going to impact them. And so really, I wanted something more connective. And then one day, I was on an internet spiral. And I came across this program that allows students with a bachelor's degree in any field to become a nurse in one year. Now, I had never considered nursing. Healthcare was my mother's realm. But the more I read about this field and the lateral movement it afforded, the more it piqued my interest. I could go on and specialize in psychiatry, become a nurse practitioner, even keep a foot in academia. But the thing was, I had no idea what a nurse even did. I'm a reader, and so I went to bookstores trying to find things by nurses, and there was nothing. And then I asked people, and I got these stories like, oh, the nurse who got me through labor and delivery. Like, I still remember her name to this day, Barb. And, then people would talk about this exceptional nurse that defined the experience of their dad's heart surgery. But all of these stories, they were really more adoration than insight. But I had some sort of gut feeling that we get, so I decided to go ahead and apply. And I took the prerequisites at a community college, and soon I was there. I was in a teaching hospital in the West Hills of Portland. There were 58 of us with backgrounds ranging from seasons on commercial fishing boats in Alaska to elementary school teachers. 
It was a year of firsts with highs and lows. I practiced giving injections to oranges and then gave flu shots to the entire hospital staff. I lived on ice cream and there were nights I got three hours of sleep, but it was worth it for moments like this time I stood in the OR, I'd never been in before, and I watched, the, the team had just fixed a, a heart valve, and I watched saline swirl through its chambers, and Beyonce was playing overhead, and I thought, there's nothing cooler than this moment. But of course, I was wrong. So I was working in a county clinic one day, and a man came in. He was about my age, and he was a heroin user. He had track marks up and down his arms that were turning to abscesses, and he was at risk for infection. And he'd been avoiding the emergency department out of fear of the police, but he came into this county clinic religiously every few days to get his wounds cleaned. I noticed as we were working with him, he picked up uh, his cell phone, and he, he was on the phone with his dealer. They were arranging a meeting spot. And at this point, I was sort of just standing around while the other nurse was packing his wounds. And this is something you get used to, a lot of awkward standing around in your first year. But I noticed, and I noticed that in this unfolding moment, nurses were the only people who could help this man. They were the only people who could reach him because they were the only people he trusted. And this was when I really started to get interested in nursing. I also worked with refugees. Um, I worked with a wise and gentle Burmese man with a history of schizophrenia, and I went to his house weekly to assess his symptoms. And I remember he told me he'd been seeing small, friendly stars. And he sang to himself at night to keep his hallucinations at bay. Every time a hospital fills a bed on a cardiac unit or a cancer floor, they make money. And every time they take on a psychiatric patient, they lose money. Now, it came to no surprise to me that healthcare, like anything else, is a business. But you'll notice you're never driving around and see signs that say, future in schizophrenia care, future in depression care. And so this really made me think about studying Eastern religion in my time at Reed, and this, this theory of interconnectedness that says what defines a society, the mark of a civilized society is not just its ingenuity, but how it addresses its shadows. I also worked on an inpatient psychiatric unit, and one day this woman was really pissed with me. She um, was posturing and got in my face yelling, and I was really flustered. And I turned to my preceptor thinking, what am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to redirect her, set limits on her behavior, put her in timeout? And this, of course, was ridiculous. And he told me that he became a good nurse when he realized one thing, that when he was experiencing this thing that I was currently feeling, this frustration with a patient, he had to reflect on where it came from. Because usually when you really look at it, it doesn't come from a place of fear of any legitimate threat. It comes from a place of wanting to have the upper hand, to teach a lesson, to make sure that this person is malleable to the same codes of society that govern the rest of us. So whenever I'm at a dinner party and I tell people I'm a nurse, I get mixed responses. Sometimes they just start telling me about their yeast infection, which is actually less offensive than the question, well, why nursing? You are smart enough to go to medical school. And this makes me so mad because nurses for too long have been relegated to a stereotype of this female in starched whites with the hat, either maternal or sex object, Madonna or whore. I think we're perceived as cleaning up dung at the base of the medical hierarchy. And I'm not the only one who feels this way. My mother lasted a few years as a nurse and 
turned around to become a doctor because in her time, this stereotype was impossible to get out from underneath. But nurses are not accessories. They are fully realized agents of their own fate who came to a choice about their career like anyone else. This choice is based on something Donna Deers describes as the indifference to power for its own sake. The pleasure associated with helping someone from a position of peer rather than assumed subordinate. And it's true. Nurses will tell you they want to work with people, not for them or above them. We are looking at a new dawn for the world of nursing. By the year 2050, our population is expected to increase to 9 billion. And with the advent of the Affordable Care Act, there are immense and complex challenges on the horizon. I think about the day, not too far for any of us, where we sit in our living room and we have appointments on a little device, an eye nurse. As medicine continues to find newer and more sophisticated ways to tidy up people and their experiences into data and figures and boxes, like they have to right now, what happens to the humanity? Will there be more or less of it? The perspective of the nurse is essential because the nurse knows the complexity and the multiplicity of the human experience, from those who've been at the bedside for 40, 50 years to those who are just starting their profession. They see all that happens to it in the name of healthcare. And if you're wondering, well, how does this impact all of you? Think about a time you or someone you love have had an encounter with the world of modern medicine. And you'll see that the nurse is a stranger who overnight becomes your advocate. And for their 12-hour shift, they are your warrior and friend when you are gutted and utterly vulnerable. I came to see they're the single most important link between each of us and the healthcare system. So graduation came and I should be applying for my first job as a nurse. But the thing is, I'm filled with stories about this profession that truly transformed my life. Nursing humbled me. It unraveled me physically and emotionally, and it made me tender. When you see the body confined to a hospital bed, day after day, you appreciate the sheer latitude that your health affords you. It also teaches you about uncertainty, because we are always suspended in uncertainty, and life is absurd. And for every moment we spend working against the world by trying to control it, we miss out on something. This is a picture of my partner and I. She's here in the audience. And I have to tell you all, there's a time in my life where I couldn't stand up here and show you this photo where I omitted parts of my story. But nursing taught me something else. It taught me, as Audre Lorde says, to be deliberate, afraid of nothing. Nursing teaches you not only to celebrate your love, but to make a scene with it every day. It also taught me about privilege, because no matter what room you walk into, there will be something that separates you. Background, grief, pain. As Dr. Finn says, we cannot bracket enough of ourselves to know the other. We have to do much more to unlearn our own bias. And this thing of empathy that we rely on, it's only a second best understanding. We have to work at it. And this is a sentiment our world today demands more than ever. My liberal arts education asked me questions like, can we ever really experience anything objectively? Is justice more than just a human convention? And then nursing turned around and asked me, how will you treat a patient whose child just died on their lap 
when they were the drunk driver of a car or a sex offender chained to their bed. At Reed, I learned that learning is something never complete, that you pursue it for its own sake. And then I began nursing school and it displayed infinite types of brilliance because explaining cancer to an eight-year-old in terms they can understand, that takes brilliance. Distracting someone through a painful procedure, that does as well. And I don't know how I can tell you of the wisdom that patients share as they face their respective dilemmas with the human condition. This is a gift that every nurse listening knows about. My liberal arts education taught me to express my ideas by exploring what I might say, what they might mean. And then nursing taught me to communicate what is essential. You can't wax poetic on the meaning of life when someone's received a terminal diagnosis or is swept up in mania. It taught me that language connects us, that words matter, and that grand ideas are only as important as your ability to tell someone you are safe or I am here. I once heard that there's a divide in humanity between people who will do anything to feel or appear far from darkness and those who aren't comfortable unless they're near truth. So the latter is where nursing resides and it's also why we must protect and treasure the liberal arts because they can be distilled to this canon of stories that at their best offer us renewal. They tell us you don't have to face your shadow side alone because we've done it as a species throughout time. They tell us it's okay to do something common in your own style. They give you moral courage and moral nerve. I want to close with a poem by Adrian Rich. And this poem talks about the descent of a lone diver from clear blue light into the depths of the sea. And they come to explore a shipwreck. They're looking for truth. Now, Adrienne Rich was a poet, but she knew something about nursing. She knew that insight is only one dimensional until you behold it from several angles, until you examine it in various shades of light. She knew that our insight, boundless and diverse and beautiful, is what incites our humanity. The words are purposes, she says. The words are maps. I came to see the damage that was done and the treasures that prevail. The thing I came for, the wreck and not the story of the wreck, the thing itself and not the myth, the drowned face always staring toward the sun, the evidence of damage worn by salt and sway into this threadbare beauty. This is the place, and I am here. Thank you. <laughs>